Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I just got back from a camping trip. It was a fun one, but it was eventful. <laughs> A little fast. <laughs> yeah. Straighten out. Passenger, passenger. Passenger. The other passenger. Easy. Yep. Easy peasy. There is our camp spot. It's pretty good. Let me flip this around here. We got my spot where I underestimated or maybe overestimated how close this was gonna come to the edge. So hopefully I don't stumble out here in the middle of the night and right into the creek. Trey's been having a good time. Here's Brad. It's my old tent. Nick's going for the ground tent. Here's the OD forerunner that everyone likes to see. I get a lot of questions from time to time uh, asking about certain aspects of my camping setup or how do you find the time or what do you what do you do to prepare for a camping trip, that kind of thing. So I was gonna just kind of make an all-encompassing video that talks about how I approach camping kind of or overlanding if you want to because I typically these days now camp with a vehicle which you know people call it overlanding so camp with a truck or whatever. Uh, so kind of just some steps that I take to ensure that I have a, a good trip, a fun trip that I actually go and so we'll just kind of get into some tips. Maybe I'll show some footage of this weekend's camping trip if I have time to splice it in. Uh, also, thanks, my site launched. So if you're looking for holsters, swag, that kind of stuff, llod.us. So hats actually are pretty much sold out. They sold out pretty quick. So thanks for the support there. Uh, trucker hats sold out pretty quick and then large, extra large flex fit hats sold out pretty quick. And I think there's probably still, depending on when this video is, there's still a fair amount of small mediums. So I ordered the same amount of large, extra large and small mediums, but apparently most people have the bigger heads and not the smaller heads. So that's good to know moving forward. I won't get as many of the small mediums. That way we have more large, extra large. Anyway, all right, breezing past that, how to make yourself go camping. So one of the things that I deal with the most is I'm a busy guy, you know, I have a full-time job, I do this YouTube thing, I run a small holster company. Uh, so finding the time to go, if I never made time to go, I would never go. So the first step I can give, uh, if you're busy anyway, if you're not busy and you just have all the time in the world, then this one doesn't really apply to you, but most of the world I feel like is pretty busy these days. So if you're very, very busy, you won't find the time to go just the time won't just show up and a weekend will come and it'll be like, oh, I got nothing to do this weekend. I guess we can go on camping. You have to make the time. So making time involves planning, planning ahead for the trip. So whether it's a week in advance, whether it's months in advance, whatever. During the summer, I've been trying to go every other weekend, which is a, a significant amount of time for me. But every time I go, I make a plan days in advance, sometimes weeks in advance, but as far in advance as you need to, to carve out the time to make yourself go. Uh, and then the second part of that is plan where you actually want to go. Don't just say, I'm going to go camping this weekend and don't know where you're going to go. I typically don't go to campgrounds, but if you want to go to a campground, then you need to make reservations in advance. Some of these places you need to make them months in advance. I typically go just kind of open camping. Uh, but I still do plan the trail that I'm gonna do and I always have a backup 
trail. So you can download the trail offline, you can download it into your GPS of choice, whatever, but just have a plan to go to a place and then have a backup plan. I usually, I usually have a backup plan for another trail nearby so I don't waste a whole day driving from one trail to another trail. So I'll have my primary trail that I'm gonna go on and almost all the trails that I go on have multiple camping spots. So it's pretty rare that I won't be able to find at least one camping spot on the trail. But make a plan and furthermore, make some specifics in that plan as well so that you have an actual destination that you wanna go to and it'd be good to have a backup location because a lot of uh, four wheel drive off-road trails they're closed seasonally. Sometimes they're closed for fire stuff. Sometimes they're closed for repair. A lot of times that information is kind of hard to find online. So you don't know until you get there and the trail's closed. So it's always good to have at least one backup. Two would be even better. It's starting to drizzle here. And on, on our trip back, we went through just a giant, crazy downpour, like the heaviest rain that I think I've ever driving, driven through. So hopefully I get this video in before then. If not, I'll have to pull in under some covering and finish it off. Uh, anyway, another, I guess we're on the third maybe, the third aspect I like to do is have a list. So I've camped for a dozen years, but more recently have been very specific into vehicular camping, and that affords me a wider variety of things to bring. Uh, with that, I want to make sure I bring everything. So I don't want to get there and realize I forgot a pillow or I don't want to get there and realize I forgot my stove or whatever. So I have a list that I've compiled for myself through the years. I'm going to put that list on my website. I'll link it down below, uh, camping checklist or whatever. Uh, and you guys can look at that list and at least use it as kind of a starting point for your own list that you'll develop for your own needs. So a list is, there's two important reasons to have a list. One is so you don't forget anything. It's good, good to always kind of have a backup in case you forget one thing, you can use another thing. Uh, but so you don't forget anything. And the second is it makes it easier to go. It's another thing where you're like, okay, well the night before or the morning of, you're gonna pack for your trip. If you're running around, did I remember this? Did I forget that? If you have a list, you can just kind of go through. And I break my list out too. I have. Part of my list is stuff that's inside, and then the second part of my list is stuff that I keep in the garage or in the shed or something like that. So then I can look through my list and make sure that I have everything. And if I, if I don't have a good grasp of my list, if I don't go camping a lot or whatever, I can just, okay, grab these three items, grab them, pack them. Okay, grab these three items, grab them, pack them. And it makes, makes packing much more efficient and also much less stressful because you're not driving. I'm like, did I forget this? Because you have that list to refer to as you're packing up. All right, we're getting a little more rain, but we'll try and get through this. Uh, another thing I like to do is have my general setup for my truck. Now I'm a gear tester, so my gear kind of changes from time to time, but I have a general setup. I'll usually keep water here on the back of my truck or I'll have a cooler here depending on what I have. So I'll put a cooler sometimes in the back seat just because it's easier to grab, uh, but sometimes I'll put the cooler back here if we have passengers in the back seat or something. But if I don't have the cooler back here, I have my water jug back here. So I like this because it's easy to access in case I need water for my dog or need to fill a bottle up or I'm doing something where I need to fix something like on this last trip, I got my hands real dirty because I had a problem. I had a breakage. Uh, so then if my hands get real dirty, it's easy just to swing this down, swing it out wash my hands on the bed of my truck. So I typically always will keep my water in the back here. And then everything else is kind of like Tetris. So if you have a game plan before time, you're not left kind of like, oh, this doesn't fit, I'll turn it around. And then now it, it doesn't fit well. So two things for packing is obviously to utilize your space well, if you have a lot of stuff that you wanna bring. Uh, and the second is if you fill the space up this stuff isn't sliding around and bouncing around and all that kind of stuff. Luckily, I have it under this. Uh, I have you've seen this in my videos, the Diamondback tonneau cover. So I have everything under here. So it's not going to like bounce out or anything on a crazy bump. But basically, we have stuff in here. We have it organized. We kind of know where things go, uh, especially if you go camping a lot and only have one table and two chairs, then you kind of know what you're going to bring. For me, it's like I'm testing out a lot of stuff, so I don't know what table. So it shifts around for me a little bit. Uh, but one aspect of packing that really helps me is have your go-to water jug. I'll kind of link down below in the description to like the gear that I like to use too. But you know, have your go-to stuff. 
These are some waterproof boots in case I need them. These are leveling blocks, so when I have my rooftop tent and I need to level out my truck, these come in a little more handy than like using rocks or something, which I do still often use. All right, it started <laughs> raining a little too much out there. So the next thing, I forget where I was, but I utilize cases. So I like to put stuff, kind of my core items in one big tub. So I used to have two tubs that I kind of broke out into like cooking supplies and then general camping supplies and some of them got mixed up. And then I had to grab two tubs and put them in here and kind of organize them. In any case, I switched to one bigger tub. So this is another uh, Plano Sport. This is the heavy duty sportsman's trunk. This is the one that has the wheels on it back here. Oh, you can't see. It has these wheels right here. So I don't really need them but it does make it a little easier to slide in. So you lift it a little bit and it kind of rolls a little bit. Uh, anyways, these are super heavy duty. You can stand on these. You can use them as a bench when you're out camping or something like that, especially this bigger one. Uh, and this one is in gray. I think it comes in black and like a forest green as well. So inside of here, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but inside of here I have kind of compartmentalized somewhat to like food items and general camp items. Now in here I'll have lanterns, I have hammocks, I have my stoves, cooking utensils, some backup stuff, some bear spray, all kinds of stuff. A little like one of these little super mini fire extinguishers. So a lot of good stuff in here obviously. But anyways, what I have here, kind of the general thing we're going for, is to make camping easy and to make getting ready to go camping fast. The more items you can just leave in here, the better. One other thing I have in here is kind of some, some spam because I went to high school in Hawaii. I actually liked spam before that. But if you've ever lived in Hawaii for any amount of time, then you really like spam. So stuff in here, mountain house kind of items, bars that last forever. This is kind of my backup food in case either something happens to my primary food or if I forget to bring it. Cause there was a few, few camping trips back. I had everything packed up, the cooler packed up, but I forgot to grab my hot dogs out of the refrigerator and put them in the cooler. So I didn't have food. I didn't have my primary food source, so I relied on having a backup food source. So this kind of can tie into preparedness. Like, you know, this could be kind of like a bug out bin or something like that. But for me, this is my camping bin and I just kind of have my backup food in here. And then in addition to that, my primary items in here as well. If you'd like to see me do like a full detailed breakdown of what's in my, my main camping bin, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll get that prepared. But anyways, some people use systems, two bin, three bin, four bin, whatever. It kind of depends on how long you're going on your trip or whatnot. But I have all of my kind of primary camping and cooking elements in one big bin. This is a good bin because it's a good size to fit in the bed of your truck. Long ways, oh yeah, that's another another reason. So I had these smaller bins in there. Sorry, hopefully this rain's not too loud. I have like a little metal roofing over here that's kind of loud when it rains. Uh, but one of the things is when this was all the way pushed back with the smaller bins, I couldn't just lean in and reach and grab this. I really kind of had to climb in and get back in there. And I normally have my tent on top. So reaching way in was kind of a pain. So when I went to this bigger, longer case, now I can just reach in and grab it. One go, get it out. Get it out and into the fight. So then I just keep this in my garage when I'm ready to go camping, grab this, throw it in. If I want to put other food items or snacks or whatever for the weekend, I do keep a little extra space in here as you can see. So if I needed to bring bags of chips or hot dog buns or some marshmallows or something that didn't need to be refrigerated or in the cooler, I could just throw it right in the top here. Maybe I wanted to bring some extra pillows or whatever, throw it right in. So I always typically like to leave a little bit more room for things when I can in cases or bags in case I want to throw extra gear in there. And that'll kind of transition into 
preparation, food preparation. So some people have specific things they like to do when they go camping. I typically get hot dogs, not just like, usually a worst, like a cheddar worst or a jalapeno cheddar worst or something like that, but hot dogs essentially, just because they're easy to make, they feel like you're camping, you know, just something about eating a hot dog is like, I feel like I'm out camping and I just really like hot dogs. Obviously that's not gonna be the case for everyone. Some people like to go a little more extravagant with their food and actually prep whole meals and stuff. I find that I kind of either freeze food that I make ahead of time, if I'm gonna make like breakfast tacos or something like that, I'll make it all or just I'll buy a pre-made kind of thing and just toss that in the cooler, toss it on the frying pan, good to go. Uh, some people like bringing, you know, nothing wrong with bringing eggs and all the ingredients and com combining them and making a meal out there. But for me, I'm just kind of a weekend warrior. I go out every other weekend at best, usually, I mean, sometimes two weekends in a row, but every other weekend on average at best during the summer and even less during the winter. So I'm not on the road for weeks or months at a time where I really need to spice up my, my food. I can eat normal stuff during the week or get fancy during the week and then when I camp, I usually simplify, so very simple meals when I camp. Uh, I bring beers and whatever in a cooler. I just have a little Yeti cooler that I got a good deal on, and that's, that's my system for food. So and then we'll go over a couple other items in here. This is actually a brand new thing that uh, GCI sent me. I'll roll in some clips, but this thing folds down very small, and for what it is, it's, it's really compact. Fortunately for my system in the truck bed, I could put this on a roof rack or whatever. You could put this in the back of an SUV would fit as well. Uh, packs down nice and flat. Doesn't take up a ton of room for, for what it is. So this is, I forget what it's called, but I'll link, I'll link down to it below. And then I have a chair. This is an American flag chair, a cheap one that I just got at the uh, grocery store actually and this is a bigger more expensive really nice chair also by gci uh, so their company they actually sent this out to me uh as well it's it's a camping rocking chair that breaks down like this uses some pistons i'll uh, show some footage here right now but a really this was the first weekend i used it because i just got it and really nice two of those products really make camping a lot more enjoyable and the last little thing i have in here is actually just a cornhole set so it's a good it's a good thing to go camping and in addition to making a plan to actually go camping it's a good thing to plan out what you're going to do when you are camping so that means planning out what meals you want to eat what you want to eat when you're out and maybe planning out the activities you wanna do. Sometimes people don't like planning and that's fine. I'm, I'm not a big planner in general. So if you just wanna go and you'll just, we'll just make it up when we get there, that's fine too. But a lot of times having a plan is good or at least having a set of activities that you could do. So whether there's hikes around or fishing around or whatever, I like to bring activities. So cornhole's one we can set up and that kind of feels like camping for us as well. You could bring a Frisbee or some balls to throw around, anything like that. Axes to throw into dead trees or uh, knives if you wanna do that or ninja stars. So things that like lend themselves yeah, to camping is best. good. So A, if you don't plan out what you could potentially do, chances are a lot of those things that you might do need gear or equipment that you need to bring to use. So if you didn't plan ahead that you're gonna play cornhole, you can't just on the fly decide to play some cornhole if you don't have your cornhole set with you. All right, so that was a, just a random video I figured I would toss together because I get a lot of questions that I wanted to cover in one video. Um, so that's really it. If you want to see more videos like this or if you have questions about anything specifically or you want me to dive deeper into that or that, then feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I, I will. I read all the comments. Again, everything is linked below. I'll link to my website that will kind of have my camping checklist. And then I'll also kind of summarize what I talked about in this video in probably a more organized fashion because this video is just kind of off the cuff. So anyways, get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Hit that thumbs up button, comment down below. Let me know, maybe you have some things that you always do when you camp or some things that you prep ahead of time to make camping easier and better for you. Let me know down in the comments below. I'm not an expert camper. I don't think there's a whole lot of expert campers out there, but I've been doing it a long time and these are just kind of some tips and tricks maybe that I learned along the way. All right, well, take care.